standing, but with the breath. So come up to standing, heels beneath your sit bones. Let yourself for a moment rock forward to back on your feet. Feel into the soles of your feet this morning. Noticing, are there aches, are there pains? Does one part of my foot make more contact than the other? And then just circle around the perimeter of your feet. This is a really good practice just to wake up. Sensation in the soles of the feet. Let's circle the other way. Wake up to your three arches. And then land on your feet and feel for the whole circumference of your heel. Feel for the circumference of your big toe ball mounts and the circumference of your pinky toe ball mounts. Lift your toes, lift your arches, feel the inner arch, feel the arch from big toe to pinky toe and the arch from pinky toe to outer heel. Relax the toes. Feel into how you can really root through these four corners of the feet so you don't have to over grip with the toes. And then from the pelvis, root down into the feet. Imagine the roots spreading beneath you and come into your breath. Invite the breath deep into the torso. And today, let's invite the breath to roll up the back body. So imagine a wave rolling up your back to the tops of the shoulder blades and rolling back down again. And as the breath rolls up your back, visualize it opening the blinds, opening space between the ribs, spreading the ribs away from the vertebrae. Let the breath even roll up the low back body. And then exhale, ground the feet, grow taller, lengthening the spine. So inhale, let the breath roll up the back body. Exhale as you ground the feet, lengthen the spine. On your next inhale, invite the breath to open the side bodies. Invite the breath to roll up the side bodies to the armpits. And as you exhale, ground to the four corners, lengthen the spine. Notice how the breath can draw the rib cage apart, lift the ribs a little bit. Move the ribs away from the spine. As you exhale, lengthen the spine. At the top, at the bottom of the exhale, feel from your glutes down into the outer heel just for a momentary pause. Glutes to outer heel. And then inhale, soften, invite the breath to fill the whole back hemisphere of the body. Exhale, root the four corners of the feet, lift the arches, lengthen the spine. Follow your own breath cycle, really trying to become aware of that whole back hemisphere opening the blinds of the back body opening. The spine lengthening on the exhale from the lift of the arches, from the activation of glutes to outer heel.
Now breathe into the whole circumference of the torso, filling three-dimensionally. Opening the front ribs, the side ribs, the back ribs. Opening the low back, the side bodies, the abdomen, the front abdomen. Now as you exhale, add the blowing out through the straw. Find the lift of the pelvic floor, the length up the spine. As you lengthen up the spine now with the exhale through the straw, find the lift up and back of the hyoid bone. Remember, it rests back into the neck crease as if it could rest back towards where your eyes would be on the back of your head. Let your head rest back. Feel the lengths of the curves of your spine. Feeling three-dimensionally on the inhale, lengthening up from the arches of your feet up. The hyoid bone lifts up, the base of the skull lifts, and then soften and fill. Exhaling the length of the spine up from the arches of the feet to the base of the skull. Feel your core activate. It's this inner core. Make sure that as you exhale through pursed lips, you're not tucking your tail under and flattening the lumbar spine. Yes, the glutes are active. They may reach down for the outer heels, but they're not tucking your tail. They're hugging towards the bone. They're creating a container in towards midline. On your next inhale, See if you can find a lift to the heart center and broaden across your collarbones, letting the shoulder blades rest on the back ribs. It may be a little bit of a stretch in your front chest at the pectoralis minor. Bring your hands up and palpate the transverse abdominis turning on on the exhale. Keep working with it. Fluid breath. And then let's lift up our long TheraBand. Let's take the long TheraBand up overhead. Back of the head, remember, so that you can press up from behind the ears into the TheraBand. This will help you rest the hyoid bone back and lift the base of the skull a little bit. Fluid breath. We need long muscles at the back of the neck and stronger muscles at the front of the neck. Now don't pull down hard with the hands, just let them weight the head slightly. Take your inhale, exhale up into the TheraBand, broad across your collarbones, let the shoulder blades rest on the back. So this may not feel so much like shoulder work, but really it is that alignment work that can help us create space in the shoulders. Notice where your head of your arm bones sit. We don't want them forward in the rotator cuff. We don't want them too far back, too far, too high. Think of your shoulder joint as a circular room and the humerus bone wants to be in the center of it. Can you maintain that awareness and on your next exhale, lift to a toe and then inhale, release the foot. Exhale, lift to the other toe. Inhale, come on to the four corners again. Exhale, perhaps the knee rises and lowers. Exhale, long spine, lifted knee. See how you can grow the spine as you root the standing leg. Perhaps still using your blowing out through the straw. Inhaling and filling three-dimensionally. Rooting the foot, rising into the TheraBand. Can your sternum stay lifted, your shoulder blades on the back body, and this next time you lift, 
Can you straighten the leg and pause? Let the hip release. Feel the strength of the standing foot grounding and release. As you're ready, exhale the next knee up. Really ground into the standing foot, lift into the TheraBand, and if you'd like to, open the knee. Heart stays lifted, shoulder blades on the back body. And release. Release your TheraBand down in front of you. And inhale, lift it up overhead. Pause wherever the stretch feels good for you. Breathe into it. Pay attention to where your humerus bone is in the circular room of the shoulder uh, joint and come back down. So just really imagine that. Inhale up and exhale down. This time as you inhale up, root your third leg, your tailbone. On the exhale, lift your pelvic floor, lengthen the spine, lift the heart. It's a tiny bit of a standing back bend. And exhale, release. So we'll inhale up. Exhale there. Really feel into the pose. Lengthen the spine. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Take another inhale into the full circumference of the torso. Exhale and release. One more time. Lifting up. Can you lift the low rib ring away from the rooting pelvis? Root into the four corners of each foot. Lift your toes, lift your arches. On your next exhale, blow out through your pursed lips. Broaden across the shoulder girdle. The head floats above. Take another few breaths here. Can you ground the tailbone so that you're strong in the back of the spine? Lift the heart. Shoulders relaxed away from the ears. And then exhale, release. So you can stay with those or inhale the TheraBand up, take it overhead, let it open behind you and come down. So we'll inhale up and over, exhale down, inhale up and exhale down, pausing wherever you feel like the stretch is good for you today in your shoulder girdle. Now notice if you come way back, do you tend to throw your ribs forward? Ground the tailbone. Let it be a shoulder joint motion. You can release the TheraBand a little more through your hands. And one more time. We'll inhale up. Can you keep that long spine, that spacious torso, and let the arms do their work with an awareness in how the humerus bone moves as you move? And then let's release the TheraBand onto the palms in front of us with the elbows in our golf tees. So little rotator cuff work. Really feel for the shoulder blade on the back body. We don't want the head of the arm bone forward. And hold the left hand facing the right palm, right palm facing up, and take the right arm out to the side and come back in. Feel into both shoulder blades stable as you turn the humerus bone in its joint socket. We open and close, open and release. We can exhale and inhale. Exhale the work, activating your core and inhale. Perhaps exhale through pursed lips, grounding your feet, lengthening your spine and inhale. And then turn the right palm up, left, I mean, right palm in, left palm up, and take the left palm out. Really feel into letting your head and hyoid bone rest back. This is really important for the shoulder girdle. If you're carrying your head forward like this, it's going to be hard not to take the humerus bone forward as well. Let the head rest back. Feel the whole circumference of your heel grounding. Feel the tailbone grounding, your natural lumbar curve, the low back rib ring grounding so that you have stability in the shoulders for this opening and closing. Now both palms up, take both hands out. Keep the elbows in your golf tees. We pause here, lifting the heart, finding your three-dimensional breath. 
exhaling length to the spine and close. Let's do that two more times. Open, find your shoulder blades on the back body and release. One more time, open. Broad across your shoulder girdle. Shoulder blades, play with them a little bit. Are they sliding down your back? If they are, buoy them up a little bit. Make sure that you're not collapsing in the lower back. And release. And roll your shoulders. Oof, oof. Okay. Let's put on the circle TheraBand. And let's lift up our hand weights. Let's do a little of the foot strengthening work. <clears throat> uh, lifting our arms, humerus bones parallel to the floor. We will open out and pause. Okay, so you can do it without the TheraBand if you don't have one. As you step wide, the knees bend. I want you to pause here, lift the toes, lift the arches. You'll feel your inner arch active as it pushes out against the TheraBand. If you don't have a TheraBand, imagine it. Let your hyoid bone in your head rest back. Find your shoulder blades on the back body and close. Pause in the close. Feel how the shoulder blades came around the rib cage and open. And close. And open. Find the four corners and close. Open. Feel into your arches and close. Inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. Can you stay aware of your feet landing? Notice if you have a tendency to want to collapse. The beauty of this exercise is when you step out, you kind of press into the TheraBand, which brings you into the outer heel. Feel for that. So we open and close open and close. Sometimes we start to take these exercises so fast, we don't feel what's happening. But notice you can really connect with your outer heel here. So those of you who supinate, I mean, pardon me, who pronate and collapse into your inner arch, here, you're going to be asked to press into the outer heel, which will help you resist that. You're building inner arch strength. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Now, if you supinate, you need to make sure you stay connected with your big toe ball mound and inner heel. And come back to center and release your arms and let them swing. Okay, so here, see if using the weights, you can let the humerus bone really traction away from the shoulder girdle. Feel into that possibility. And then lean yourself slightly forward, continuing the swing. Now, it doesn't have to be a hard swing, but just allow that tissue to release a little bit. And then bring the hands towards stillness, still tilted over slightly, and let your arms just gently circle. So we're using the hand weights to traction. If this is hard on your spine, you can put one hand on your legs to support you. You could put an arm on a tabletop and do the arms one at a time. But if you can do both arms, then we'll just do both arms here. Can you keep the neck long? So we have the tendency to keep our gaze at the horizon, but look how that shortens the back of the neck. So look down in front of you on the floor and then circle the arms the other way. And one more time, let them swing. And come back to standing and let them swing. Good. And then pause with the arms to the sides. Exhale through pursed lips, root the feet, let the arms rise out to the side. And circle the arms there. Feel where your humerus bone is in the shoulder socket. Circle the arms forward. Face the palms towards each other. Circle them down. Can you stay strong, tailbone grounding like a third leg as you make another rotation up and forward, palms face and down. And let's do it one more time. Can you stay long in the spine, lifted at the low rib ring as your arms move, tailbone grounding, knees don't lock, pelvis doesn't thrust. And let's float the arms up again. 
press the hands down like you're pressing on tables on both sides and lengthen the spine. Take an inhale and exhale, lift to one toe. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift to the other toe. Can you stay long in the spine? Perhaps lift the knee and lower and lift. Feel how the back hamstring activates and how you can press into the back heel of the standing leg. The TheraBand helps us become more aware of our proprioception. And release your arms and roll your shoulders. And let's float the arms back up into our cactus position and exhale, pinky fingers towards each other. Inhale into the back ribs, breathing that wave up the back body. Exhale, the movement open. Inhale, the wave of breath up the front body. Exhale, inhale, the wave of breath up the back body. Move at your own pace, inhaling in the position, exhaling the movement. And then turn your palms towards each other and relax the arms. Okay, let's stand strong on the right leg and inhale, lift the arms, lift into the left leg and come back down. Now really important for your shoulder here is to keep the hands a little in front of the body so that the humerus bone can sit into the circular room of the shoulder. We don't want the head of the arm bone forward because we're throwing the wrist back. So we feel into our scapular plane, the plane of our shoulder blade. We let the arm follow that plane. Meanwhile, we're strengthening the four corners, three arches of the standing foot and the hips. One more. And then take it to the other side, standing strong on the left leg, lift your arches, no gripping with the toes. Now here, pause for a second. And think, as the wrist rises, let the humerus bone release down. Inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling. Really think of the teeter-totter effect in the arm. As the wrist rises, the humerus bone head releases down. We want that release. It's part of why we did the tractioning work. We inhale and exhale. Feel into your standing foot from the four corners. Rise up on the lift. Keep the arches active even as you release the legs and the arms. One more. And pause. Mountain pose. With the hand weights in your hands, can you find the shoulder blades on the back body? Open across the, the collarbones. Let the hyoid bone rest back in and up. Come back to your three-dimensional breath. Bring the arms forward and take one foot back. Come into a standing back bend, lifting the heart, tailbone reaching for the back foot heel. And then hinge up over the standing leg. Press into the lifted legs, back hamstrings. Reach out through both feet. Feel the four corners and the arches and then come back up. So it'll be a shortened Vera three because depending on how strong your TheraBand is, step the other leg back. Lift from the low rib ring as you ground down from the pelvis, long spine. Rest the hyoid bone back, that's part of your shoulder health. Float forward over your standing humerus bone. Really press into the back lifting hamstring, be aware of it. Notice how that can help you with your balance and come back up. All right, let's come to the floor. Oh, actually, uh, yeah, let's come to the floor and we'll stand back up for the sideline piece. So come to the floor with your TheraBand still on if you wanna keep it. Have your ball blocker move. And come into constructive rest. Feel the four corners of each foot on the floor. Lift your toes, lift your arches. 
relax your toes. Feel the shoulder girdle. Let it broaden. Let the head of the arm bones really rest into the height of gravity and nod, tailbone towards earth, tailbone towards sky. Feeling into your lumbar curve, flattening it, over accentuating it, and then come to neutral. Ground your left foot on the floor, float your right shin up. Float back down, land the four corners lightly. Keep the foot light, so don't put all your pressure on the foot and float the other leg up. Notice how more core is involved. Float the foot down, put about half the pressure on the foot. So Sherry, I'm just, I'm landing my foot, but I'm not pressing hard into the foot on the floor. Does that make sense? So you're just putting like maybe three quarters of your weight on the foot as you lift the other side, and you'll notice that activates your core. Keep a natural lumbar curve. Don't let your shoulders try to do the work for you. They're resting back. You're working from the low rib ring down with the foot's four corners landing lightly. Feel for your arches of your feet. So we're just building our awareness of the feet as they land lightly. And then float one leg up to tabletop and the other to join. Open your knees as wide as your shoulders. Point your toes and dip your toe two thirds of the way down. Come up, touch your heels. Dip the other toe, come up, touch your inner heel. Dip and touch, dip and touch. See if you can do this work with your eyes closed. Notice if your feet are kind of cramping from the point. Now flex, dip and touch inner heels, dip and touch inner heels. The toes can splay out and stretch. We're still broad across the shoulder girdle. Toes are splayed, inner heels touch. And come back up, close the legs together. Floint the feet. Feel into the big toe ball mound, the inner heel, the pinky toe ball mound, the outer heel in the floint. And shoulders broad, take the left leg out to the left and pause. Ground the right pelvis, the right shoulder. Come back into center, left leg out and pause. Make sure the right side's grounding. Where can you release too much tension? How can you do this with the least effort and come back in? One more time, take it out. Feel in, where do I need to effort to ground? Where don't I need to effort? Come back in, relax your feet and take the right leg out. Notice if you feel disconnected with the foot there, come back in, flex the foot, the feet. Take the right leg out and pause. Feel left shoulder, left sacrum grounding. You may have to rearrange, you may have to activate the core. Come back in, take the right leg out and pause. Feel for the left side grounding. Notice if it's easier to ground one side than the other in your body. Come back in and one more time. Shoulders relaxing, come back in and hug the knees into your chest and lift the TheraBand up to your ankles. Legs straight up, let the arms rest wide, not quite in a T, hands more towards the hips. Right foot comes overhead, left foot underneath and pulse, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Point the toes and then relax the feet into a gentle point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch legs. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now switch. Switch which foot's in front, spreading wide into the theraband at the outer edge. Switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and flex. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and point. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can stay here or move down. Two, three, four, and up. Two, three, four, shoulders relax back. Three, four, and up. 
two, three, four, and down, two, three, four, and up, two, three, four, and release, release the TheraBand, kick it off your body, and pause in your tabletop. Fluid breath. Okay, and actually, if you, do you all have balls? If you have a ball, I'd like you today to take it behind your shoulder, between your shoulder blades, and to wrap your hands underneath your head and lift the pelvis. And roll yourself up and down the ball. So your core has to turn on to balance yourself, yourself on the ball as you roll up and down. Those of you who don't have a ball, if you have a foam roller, you could do that. The ball is a little bit more core activating because we have to balance on it side to side. A roll on the ball. And then pause forward, let your hips rest down and take your elbows a little wider, still letting the head of the arm bone rest back, lengthen the spine up over the ball, opening the front chest. Take a few fluid breaths. You could do this over a yoga block as well. Lift the pelvis back up, lift the head back up, and roll forward to back. And then pause, release your pelvis, open the elbows a little more, rest the head back over the ball. Some of you may be able to bring in a pillow and rest the head all the way to the floor and reach your arms extended out overhead in a back bend. Make sure that your chin is not jutting for the sky, that the back of your neck can be long as you rest your head back. Take a few fluid breaths right there. Opening the shoulder girdle, relax into the breath. If it's hard to have your arms all the way to the floor, it's fine to have them up. Just take them over as far as they comfortably go. You could play with coming back up, opening your arms into a cactus position, resting the wrists back. From here, you could exhale pinky fingers together and then open back up. So go ahead and play in the pose finding what stretch, what opening feels good for you. For me, the basic opening of arms stretched overhead feels like it really opens the armpit area, and the muscles along the outer shoulder blade, and then exhale, lift the head back up, release the ball from behind you. Rest the head back down off the pillow and lift up, placing your ball block or oove under your sacrum. Again, bring your feet into alignment, heels with sit bones, shoulders resting back and float one leg up to tabletop and the other to join it. Open your legs into a scissor and pulse, pulse and switch. Pulse, 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 pulse. pulse. Really think about letting the head of the arm bone rest back, the hyoid bone rest in and up, and take your legs into a bicycle, pointing the feet and then flexing the feet. Spread the toes in the flex, floint the foot, spread the toes in the floint, point the feet, draw the toes together. Now bicycle backwards. Can you really press the pointed toes out? Especially as it's like they're scooping water low when they reach out and you're flinging it over the top of your head. <clears throat> and now flex the feet, press out with the heel, flexing the feet, scooping the water, going slow, slow it down, people, slow it down. And then come back to the top and let's go walking. A oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stay there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stay there. 
Feel your shoulder girdle broad on the floor, jaw relaxed, walk up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stay there. Try to really let go in the jaw, the eyes, the shoulders, walk back up. Take your feet wide, circle down and back together again, wide, circle together and up, point the feet. Flex the feet, feel into the calves, floint the feet. Notice the connections, feet to the rest of the body. Take your circles down the midline, out around and up in your floint. Can you feel all four corners of the foot, even with the foot in the air? This will help your yoga balance poses if you know where your feet are in space, if you're used to feeling into the four corners. One more. Come back together and float one foot to the floor and then the other. Pause for a few three-dimensional breaths. And then lift up off your ball blocker. Ooh, roll yourselves over and come to standing. Bring a yoga block with you to a wall. Uh, this is where you could use your oov uh, posey. You could too, Jory. Okay, let's have the block on the inside next to the standing foot. And let the other foot rest down beside you. So, posey, I might, well, you can have the head forward, but I'd turn the tail forward. That's what I would do. Now you want to try to keep your pelvis balanced here. So feel into balancing the pelvis and just let the legs swing. Okay. Now flex the foot, draw it back and straight down under you. Let it traction there down under you. Lift the heart. Really ground into the four corners of the standing foot. Lift the pelvic floor. You're a little off balance because you're lifting through this one side. Can you stay conscious of that length? Point the toe and kick forward. Flex and draw the heel right back under you. You're not taking it way behind you this time. Forward and back. Stay aware of your lumbar spine. You may even put your hands on it or a hand on it. We don't want to over flatten it. Stop your kick forward before it flattens. We kick and draw back. Keep the heart lifted, the head resting back. Some of you are putting the head forward to watch your leg. Let the head rest back. Feel the leg. Feel the leg, beautiful. And one more. Bring your foot beside the block. Stand strong on your standing leg. Take the foot out to the side. Pinky and outer heel lift and lower. Now notice how much work this standing leg has to do. Those of you who've done a lot of side lying, this is almost more work than the actual side lying. Try to keep the side body that would be on the floor with the foot on the block, keep it long and strong. One more, bring the foot down by the block and point. Circle, two, three, four, and five. Bring the foot a little forward and circle, two, three, four, and five. Right there, change directions. Circle, two, three, four, and five. Come down and circle, two, three, four, and five. Step down. Feel it from your hips down to your feet and notice which hip feels like it was working more. Really interesting. I want to hear about that after class. Okay, then you're going to turn around and I'm going to watch you. And you're going to start by just swinging the leg and letting it swing. If you're standing on the oove, if any of your Jory and Jonathan, if you're using that, then um, you would put your second toe to your kind of Achilles lined up that way. So you're just kicking back and forth, back and forth, letting the leg traction out of the hip joint. Now notice if your lumbar spine is following the moving leg. Most of us swing sometimes from the low back. We want to start dissociating the femur bone in the hip socket. Yeah, good, good exploration. Now bring your foot so that it's standing right beside the other leg. Flex the foot, reach the heel towards the floor, pelvis balanced. Feel into that balance. And then lifted heart, head resting back. Feel the leg as you point and kick forward. 
flex and draw the heel right under you. Don't toe draw it back anymore. So some of you are still drawing it back. Kick forward and then draw back. Forward and back. Let your head rest back. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful. Let your gaze be on the horizon or the mountaintop. It's not looking down. Shoulder blades on the back body. This is all shoulder work right here. And kick forward one more time, drawing back. Now, take the pinky and the outer heel out to the side. Out to the side, lifting. Don't lean over onto the standing leg and kind of curl into that side, collapsing that side. Stay strong in the standing leg side. Good. And now take the leg out and small soccer ball circles. Oh, one, two, three, four, and five. Bring the foot in front of you a ways and circle. One, two, three, four, and five. Stay there, circle the other way. One, two, three, four, five. Pause. Everybody feel into the upper body. Lift the pelvic floor, lengthen the spine. Beautiful and take it down and circle one, two, three, four, and five. Beautiful. Okay, let's step down. Okay, so hopefully you felt that is really good hip strengthening work in the standing side. Posey's liking it. Okay, so those of you who are going to do it standing, do it standing again. Those of you who want to come to the floor, we're going to come to the floor and feel the difference. Okay, so we come in and we either bring a pillow across our long arm or we bring a pillow in double folded under our head so that our neck is comfortable and we line our shoulders and our sacrum up with the back of the mat so that we're in nice alignment okay and then we bring our legs in let's bring them in first to a 90 degree see how that feels and then bring the heels back so that they're aligned with your sit bones and the femur bones are at about a 45 degree angle. Yeah. And then lift your feet off the mat as high as they go and open the knees and close the knees and inhale, open and close. Now bring your top hand right in front of your core beneath the navel, near the pelvis on fingertips, press the arm down and find your shoulder girdle. Remember, that's helping you stay in the side lying position. Now, straighten your legs out long on your mat and lifting the top foot so that the foot's even with the hip. Point the toe, kick forward, draw back, heel right under you like you're standing. Point and kick, flex and draw. So if you're on the floor now, feel how different the movement is in the hip. Now, the stabilizing part of you on the floor is the side that's lying down, okay? Feel into that. But you can imagine that you're still standing in a way on the foot, the four corners active of the foot that is not moving. One more. And then kick forward, foot over foot, flex both feet, and lift the pinky and the heel. And lower, and lift, and lower. Feel the grounding side of your body. Make sure you're not collapsing in the waist. You're kind of lifting the side body slightly. And one more, and then point and circle two, three, four, and five, and circle the other way. One, two, three, four, and five. Now kick forward again with a point, flex and draw. Kick and point flex and draw one more kick and point flex and draw and point your foot down and circle two three four and five and let's switch sides okay so i really wanted you to feel those of you getting doing it standing again you're getting some extra strengthening in that standing leg those of you who've come to the floor hopefully you're feeling the difference in, ah, what happens to my side body? Can this inform how active I am on the lower side? We come into our clamshell position and we lift the feet. Now those, we should have done this on the block, but I'm gonna watch you experimenting, those of you who are doing the clamshell. Lift and open the knees and close. 
and open and close. Inhale and exhale. Keep the hand right in front of the core to remind the core to be active and supportive here. Opening and closing, inhaling and exhaling, and then straighten your legs out long. Lift the foot even with the hip, point the toe, kick forward, and draw back. Now again, stay in tune with your lumbar spine. Try not to rock your shoulder girdle. We kick forward and draw back, kick and draw, kick and draw, kick and draw. Come foot over foot and lift pinky and heel and lower and inhale and exhale, lift and lower, lift and lower. One more and point and circle, two, three, four and five other way. One, two, three, four, and five, and kick, and draw back, and kick, and draw back, and one more, kick, and draw back, and circle, two, three, four, and five, other way, one, two, three, four, and five, bring your foot back over your foot, bend your knees, and roll yourselves over into your tabletop, okay, so hopefully <laughs> that was an interesting experiment for you to see what your body does doing the same movements in different positions. Those of you who tried it, those of you who know you need to stay standing, you're building really good hip strength in the standing leg. Okay, let's bring a block in and let's do this work with the multifidi again where we step one shin onto the block. Bring the other shin up next to it as if it were also on a block. Your wrists are beneath your shoulders in tabletop. And then we lower the shin without the block towards the floor. It doesn't need to touch. And we lift back up. And we lower and lift and lower and lift. We're strengthening our awareness in the abdominal core, but also in the multifidi which are stabilizer muscles along the spine. We want them awake. We lower the shin and lift and lower and lift. And then pause here, straighten the leg out behind you and lower the toe and lift and toe and lift with a straight leg. Try not to throw the leg up hard, try to move slow so that you feel the lift, but you're also feeling length from top of head through heel through the four corners of the lifting foot. And one more. And then come back down, come off your block and we'll switch sides. Okay. So you may be like, huh, some of you may really feel this exercise. Others may not feel it so much. What I'd like you to do is bring your consciousness into your spine and feel for it. Try to find it. What is actually working as I lower my shin and lift it back up? Can I stay long in my neck, conscious of my shoulders? Fluid breath. And then lengthen the lifting leg out, flex your foot. Stretch out through the top of the head in the four corners of the foot and lower the toes and lift just as high as your buttock and lower again. The core stays strong and active. Your front neck flexors help you lift the hyoid bone in and up so that the back of the neck stays long. All of this is healthy work for your shoulder girdle. And one more. And then release, step down. Open your legs into child, wide-legged child's pose and stretch forward. Take a few deep breaths, rolling the breath up the back and side bodies. Back hemisphere of the body. Relaxing into the stretch. You may rock your sacrum a little back and forth. If you'd like to, you can walk your hands to one side and really stretch the opposite side body. 
fluid breath. And then walk to the other side, fluid breath. Walk back to center. Come up, rolling your toes under into downward dog. Let your head and neck rise above the shoulders and lengthen in line with the spine. Long spine, take the femur bones back. Three-dimensional breath into the torso. One more deep inhale. Fluid exhale and walk your feet towards your hands. Release your hands towards your feet. Knees bend. Standing child's pose. Blow out through pursed lips as you unfold and reach your arms up for the sky. Exhale, open into your cactus. Take an inhale. Exhale, pinky fingers together. Take an inhale into the back body. Exhale, open the palms away from each other. Inhale into the front body. A few more. Exhale the movement. Inhale. Follow your own breath. Come back to neutral and release your arms and roll one shoulder and then the other. Let one elbow reach back and then the other. Let yourself circle wide. Perhaps the arm opens in a really wide backstroke. And then maybe you come a little narrower. Feel into your own body. Listen to your own body. Bring the hands back behind you, palm facing palm across the back. Lift the heart center. Reach the hands back so that the head of the arm bones come down away from the ears, but lift and lengthen the spine. Bend the knees, let the hands lift towards the sky. Some of you may be able to interlace the hands or you can use your circle theraband. Come as far forward as is comfortable in your shoulder girdle. Some of you all the way into Uttanasana. Fluid breath. And then exhale, hands back towards the sacrum and unfold. Release your arms to your sides and let them gently swing. As the arms swing forward, come up onto the balls of the feet. As the arms swing back, come up onto the heels. Forward and back, forward and back. Really try to find that work in the feet. That stretch and opening of the ankle. And then exhale, hands to the heart. And let's inhale. Draw in positive energy for yourself, nurturing energy. Draw in positive nurturing energy for our planet and for all the people facing the fires. And let's inhale in to a fabulous Friday and weekend for all of you. Okay. So... I hope you all have a nice weekend. We are facing fires near where I live right now. And smoke. And smoke. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah I didn't push us as hard, like in a kind of vigorous warm up way because we have smoke. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Our sky is yellow. 
We've been indoors for a week with air conditioning 24 hours. <laughs> I know how much you like that, Jory. Yeah, my favorite. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. be down Monday through Friday. I'll call you. We can plan something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, you are welcome. Great. Happy birthday, girlfriend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun doing sideline work in standing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Isn't that take a lot of standing hip strength yeah. for the foot on the block? Surprising. Yeah. yeah. Killing, killing my hips in new ways. Yes. <laughs> that actually, that is some of the best work you can do for balance. Because you're strengthening your glute med when you're doing that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I felt the multiplicity. Did you? That. I love that. How it, you just feel like your spine is being supported in this like thing. Uh huh. Good, good. Yeah. I'm glad you're feeling it. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. It was interesting how much weight there was when we did it standing. All it felt like most of the work was on my standing leg. Uh huh. And then lying down, most of the work was on my work. Right. Yeah, on the moving leg. Yeah, ways. yeah. Yeah. And how do we become aware of the grounding side body? Like that standing work, I think, made us really aware of that side before we went, we came laying down, which I think is also really good because people yeah. kind of collapse onto their side and just work on the top, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, good. All right. Well, have have a wonderful Thank day you. and weekend. Yeah. So you'll be back. Happy birthday, Tracy. Thank you. I will be back on Wednesday. And you'll send out. I'll send out all the links and stuff today. Okay. okay thank you. You're welcome. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.